What's going on, Lions fans? Welcome to the Pride Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko, joined by my guy Morgan here. And Morgan, we're here today to recap day one of the NFL draft. The Lions made their first overall pick. And I got to say, being at the draft party yesterday and seeing how things were, were starting to build, it's it's a I still can't really believe the Lions were able to get the player that they were actually able to achieve, like actually able to pick in this draft. Yeah, man. I mean, a lot of things worked out in the in the Lions' favor uh, and Detroit's favor in general, man. I, I want to say the city did such a good job of uh, like putting this on. I was blown away. Like my expectations were high just because the city has been on the up and up for a, a little while now. But yeah, I thought they did a really great job. We walked around um, like a lot of it prior to going into Ford Field at like five o'clock, um, and then the, the the Lions did a great job of putting on that. Uh, that party. I'm glad I was able to get uh, Miko in there, Dan Pask. If you know him from Twitter, we had a couple people in there. It was a good time. Um, but yeah, every time Miko, we were talking about it, how every, every offensive player got picked, you know, early on, whether it was a quarterback or a receiver or a tackle, we were, we excitement kept building, uh, kept building yeah. and it worked out, man. It worked out. You want to break down the, uh, the specifics of the trade and we can get into it, man. Terry and Arnold, Detroit yeah. Lions. Yeah, Terry on Arnold, Detroit Lion, uh, cornerback out of Alabama. The Lions are able to get him at 24, so trading up uh, from 29, having to package the 29th pick with the 73rd pick in this year's draft. Uh, they move up, what is that, five spots uh, to get the 24th overall pick from the Cowboys as well as a 2025 seventh-round pick, which I'm I'm hoping they use for just, like, trade fodder. <laughs> Like use that to move up, use it to get maybe a player that you want to like, you know, I don't know, just evaluate or something like that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, of trading for seventh round picks. It's not, no. it's not one of my favorite things. Yeah, it's um, just kind of a, like you said, a, fl a flyer. Yeah. Oh. But again, the, the Lions did something, Morgan, that you and I had kind of talked about. I, I believe I talked about it even on Eric's podcast when I was over there on Detroit Lions Breakdown about like this the draft really feeling like one where the lions may have to be a little aggressive and and trade up to go get their guy and that guy turned out to be terry on arnold maybe not the corner i thought it'd be but i definitely clearly the best corner that they could possibly get considering the players that were on the board at the time i agree man and this is where brad holmes really shows like how awesome he is at this right because I feel like he has such a good sense of not only what his team and roster needs both now and in the future, but also like what other teams are thinking. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, if we're, if we're reading the tea leaves based on what he was, he's been saying since the Lions drafted Terry on Arnold, he sounds like they had him evaluated really highly. Like they, they liked them some Terry on Arnold. So yeah. by the time he got to, you know, the tw like twenties and Brad, I think Brad said as much, like even in the like late teens, he was like, Hey, we might have to move mm -hmm. up. So the fact that he was still sitting there at 24, I'm sure he had a good beat on maybe someone wanting Terry on Arnold uh, between the, you know, that pick and where the lines were going to pick at 29. So yeah, I have no problem with this. Um, especially if like, we're like we said, reading Brad Holmes tea leaves, they might have had Terry and Arnold ranked as like a top 10 prospect on their board. You know, so this is a great well, fit. And yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like, it, it, not just them having him rated as a top 10 player on their board, like across the across the board, every draft expert that was talking about this draft class had Terry on Arnold fairly high up in on their board or, or even in their mock drafts of not necessarily making it to the 20s. Like everyone kind of saw him going in those middle teens, maybe high teens. Um, so for him to fall to 24, I think to your point speaks very highly on how much this the, the league was was you know valuing the offensive players in this draft class whether it was wide receivers offensive linemen we saw a lot of offensive linemen go um and obviously a couple teams lost their mind with quarterbacks like I'm I'm not going to pretend like <laughs> some of those quarterbacks picks made sense but it all worked together for the Lions benefit right yeah, man. I mean, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm there with you too. Like, I don't even pretend to try to evaluate quarterbacks anymore, guys. Like, I don't, like, no one knows. Like, every year they, they people draft, five of them get drafted and they're lucky if two are, are any good. It's just a terrible yeah. hit rate. And it's one of the more perplexing things in all of sports, I think, right? Because everyone, I feel like the, people have gotten pretty good at this evaluation process, like, over all sports, you know, from football to soccer to basketball. But 
But yeah, um, it's interesting how that happened. But we, we were we were happy about it inside of Ford Field, man. When Michael Penix got drafted, JJ got drafted. I'm like, yes, yes, keep it going, keep it going. And it Bo Nix comes off the board, and then it's just like, oh, this is this is going perfectly. Like yeah. we're getting somebody. <laughs> All hell broke loose once Bo Nix came off the board. That was crazy. I was like, oh man. But but getting back to Terry on Arnold Morgan, like this is by by so if we're going by uh Eric Schlitz, you know, uh draft board, he had Terry on Arnold as his as his C B one. Um I think if you start kind of like you know, considering all the other, you know, draft boards and, and position rankings, uh, you know, that other analysts had, he was either one or two, right? He wasn't that much further down. Maybe a couple people that had Cooper DeGene as one might have had Terry on Arnold at three, but again, those people are, are few and far between. But for the most part, you're looking at either getting, you know, in most people's minds, the best corner or the second best corner in, in this draft. When you look at Terry on Arnold, what is it about his skill set that really stands out to you? And and what made him so appealing to the Lions? Just the the pedigree, right? So say what you want about Alabama, man, but Nick Saban's baby is his secondary, right? That's that's his that's his foundation in football before he became the legendary Hall of Fame coach, Nick Saban. Blah blah blah, right? So mm-hmm. um, I believe it was at Kent State. I want to say was his like break, and then he like obviously was at yeah. Michigan State, and so yeah. Funny enough, Midwest kind of guy. Um, but yeah, I just, he's just pro ready, man. He's just going to be ready to come in. He's going to compete right away. Uh, like, I, I'm not sure that we want to just pencil him in as the opposite, the starter opposite out, uh, Carlton Davis the third on the outside. I think Amik Robertson's still going to have something to say about that. People are definitely undervaluing what Amik, I think, is going to bring to the secondary. Um, but yeah, it, he's going to he's going to compete right away. Like if you most people in the draft community had either him or uh, Quinian Mitchell from Toledo as their their number one corner. So um yeah, I it, I it's exciting cuz you have some depth now, right? Like yeah. You have if if Emmanuel Mosley is able to come back and be a productive player, then you have four guys that could start on any given Sunday in the National Football League on your roster. And a lot of teams can't say that, right? And we're not even talking about Brian Branch, who is a different, you know what I mean? So it's it's an, yeah. it's an impressive group, right? No, absolutely. And I think that's the thing when you look at Terry on Arnold, you know, good size, five, you know, 5'11", very close to being six feet tall, just under 190 pounds, uh, ran a 4'5 at, at the combine, good explosion, you know, 37-inch vert, almost 11 inch uh, broad jump. I think it was like 10, seven, five, something like that. So good athlete, right? Very good compact athlete um, has great man to man skills. You know, obviously leading up to the draft, like I hyped up Kool-Aid a lot. The, 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 the other corner that played opposite him at Alabama as being a really good man to man corner. Terion is, is no slouch in that same regard. Very good in man to man coverage. Um, like you said, a, a technician, just absolute, Understanding technique, understanding leverage, great ball skills this past season, having five interceptions, 14 passes, uh, 14 incompletions forced on his of his own um, targeted like somewhere between like 80 to 79 times, something like that, and and was just highly productive this past season. And I think the thing that makes a player like Terry on Arnold so appealing maybe in, in contrast to maybe a Kool-Aid McKinstry or a Cooper DeGene is that ceiling is that a lot of people, when you hear them talk about Terry on Arnold, it's that like, yo, he is still developing. He's still getting so much better. There's so there's still so much for him to unlock as a corner. And you look at what he was able to do on the field. Like you said, at Alabama, like they play the best of the best. They're playing the Georges. They're playing, you know, Texas. Now they're playing Tennessee LSU. Like they're playing some really high powered offenses. And, for the most part, Terry and Arnold never took a step back. He did allow two touchdowns this season, but again, this is corner. Not everybody gets to, you know, have a, a shutout season where they're not giving up touchdowns. And even if you did that in college, that doesn't mean it's going to translate to the NFL, right, Morgan? Exactly. We've seen that a, a, a couple times here in Detroit. Not to mention any, any names, but yeah, it's it's exciting because Arnold was actually recruited to Alabama to play safety. Um, mm-hmm. And then quickly, quickly pivoted to play to playing corner under under Saban. And what Saban says goes back there naturally. I mean, you listen to that man, especially when it comes to the defensive side of the football. Um, so yeah, I think that gives uh, 
a cool perspective whenever you have because typically you're going from cornerback to safety as you know as corners age um yeah. rarely do you have someone at safety with the you know athletic profile to play both to pl- move from safety to corner and um, it's just it's a difficult position to play um for my money like there's some of the best athletes on the planet we've talked about this on this channel so it's a tough yeah. position to play in today's nfl can't touch anybody um, most difficult position to play. I I still contest. Yeah. Corner is the most difficult position to play in the NFL. I put it right there behind. I got to say quarterback just because, oh, my God. But, like, just having to process so fast. But football sure. on the defensive side, defensive side corner all day. I agreed with you. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm, 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 I wanted to also piggyback off what you were saying earlier about, you know, what this probably looks like for Terrion going into camp and how you were kind of saying, like, there's there's probably no guarantee. It's It's a good chance. But it it may be a little bit presumptuous of us to say, like, hey, he's absolutely CB2 because I'm right there with you. I think Amik is going to challenge. And even if Tarion does get, you know, first team reps, which is very possible, like he could absolutely get first team reps. Amik Robertson is the type of player where every day is going to be a competition. So Tarion's not going to be able to rest on those laurels of being like, oh, well, I was a first round pick this past draft it's a lock for me. Like he's going to have to work. He's going to have to grind. And the best thing about the guys that the lions draft is, you know, he's up for the challenge. Like, you know, he's, he's way, he can't possibly wait to get to camp, get to OTAs and to have to do those battles with the other guys in his secondary group uh, to see who's going to get these, these snaps. Yeah. And he's got familiar familiarity. I always trouble with that word. I don't know why, man, even <laughs> um, but Brian branch, I can spell the hell out of it, but saying it is a different thing. Um, him and Brian branch played together at Alabama. So like I saw a couple like of oh, the lions players were excited. BB, uh, Jameer, mm-hmm. Jamo, they all, I'm sure know Terry on. Um, but yeah, th- like the lions preach this all the time, man. You hear Dan Campbell say it and it might sound cliche at times just with how often they say it, but, uh, competition that's what drives you know getting better and they really believe that like to their core that's like one of their founding principles within this organization since uh brad holmes and dan campbell arrived in 2021 but yeah i i think it's going to make the secondary just that much better and i do think you know once we get into like december and january it will be terry on and carlton davis on the outside with you yeah a meek a meek still getting snaps like who knows? Like there, there could be a world where BB ends up moving to safety, and if he's still in that third safety role, and and you put a meek at the nickel, sometimes you know they they're going to mix things up. So it, it's not to say I do think there's going to be a rotation of a, a, a bit, but with Terry on and Carlton Davis, like on paper, you have the opportunity, which the Lions haven't had this in a while, where you can you can go like cover zero or just cover yeah. one and just man up on the outside and blitz like get after people on third down and that's what Aaron Glenn wants to do that's when you force turnovers that's when you cause chaos and you can get pick sixes and strip sacks and all that good stuff that really can turn the tide of games right so that's what's tantalizing to me about this and that's exactly where my brain went last night was the possibilities of uh you know what you can do with two corners who can really just lock people up on the outside because that's what you got now you know if if terry on can come in and produce right away because we already know carlton can do it yeah and i think that's the other thing so like one other thing that really stands out to me about this pick and, and i think we had talked about it in terms of talking about why corner is so important or at least seemed like a big need or seemed like a really good opportunity for the lions to invest in in this draft is you now have somebody that's under contract for at least five years, right? And 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 with no one else on this Lions roster, even, you know, scheduled to have a contract next year other than Amik Robertson, like you finally can start to build, and, and, and Brian Branch, I'm sorry, Amik Robertson and Brian Branch, you can now start to build out this young secondary that still has some veteran talent. Morgan, like, you know, Terry on Brian Branch, get to learn from the likes of an Amik Robertson, a, a Carlton Davis, the third, um, an, an Emmanuel Mosley. Like there's, there's a, a, a mentorship that can happen there so that these guys can come in and have a smoother transition into the NFL, because we all know that this, the game is going to get faster. The, the receivers that you go against are bigger. They're more technically sound than maybe what you see in college. And to have those veterans there to be able to point the nuances out to these younger guys is going to be just just huge. Yeah, and I 
I love how deliberate Brad Holmes and the rest of the Lions brass seems to be with this because they're, they're very specific about how they mix their young talent and a veteran, you know, their veterans like yeah. early on, they just had to be really young because they were up against the cap because of all the sh bad contracts that they shed early mm -hmm. on. Excuse me. This Fago is making me burpy, <sighs> um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, now you have the ability to do it like to, to assemble these rooms and these position groups as you please. And they really do a good job. Like it's still a very young team, especially when you look at the lions, like the pillars, right? Like the guys like Saint mm -hmm. St. Brown and Sewell and Jameer. And, you know, you go all over, right? Like Aiden, Terry on now, Brian branch. Like there's so much good young talent. You really, yeah. Brad Holmes is that dude, man. But yeah. Um, it's, it's a good situation because it's that you want someone that they can lean on. Like, and, Carlton Davis is going to be a great person for Terry on Arnold to talk to because Terry on Arnold, excuse me, Terry on Arnold should aspire to, to play like some Carlton Davis early on in his career. That'd be a good way to start. Right. No, 100%. And I think that's another question I wanted to ask you really quick, a uh, little bit of a curveball here, but when you look at Terry on Arnold, what do you see as his as his ceiling, like, what do you think, you know, just looking at him currently projecting, what do you think he could possibly end up being in this league? Hmm. I think he can be like, he has all the physical tools to be a press man, lock you up corner, like travel. If I need to, like if, if, you know, if the lions in the future are playing the Cowboys again in the playoffs in 2027, like Terry on Arnold's probably going to be your guy that's chasing CD lamb around as he goes in motion. And like, that's, that's what you draft Terry on Arnold for is like, now you may be in the future. Hopefully you have a stopper to slow down some of these elite receivers of the league. Like hopefully Puka Nakua doesn't go for 150 in that playoff game and you know, so yeah. on and so forth. It just, it helps out so much because if he can, if he can reach his you know ceiling and be like a player, like a, like Jalen Johnson in Chicago, like already like really good, you know, get up mm -hmm. in your chest. I'm going to jam you at the line of scrimmage. I'm going to reroute you. You're not going to get into your stuff really easily. Um, and if you have something like that, it just makes, it takes stress off of other parts of your defense. Right, Miko? Yeah, 100%. And I think that, I think that's exactly what the Lions are getting, right? Maybe not out the box. Like I said, it may take him a season or two to get to that level of player, but he has all of the, the the skill sets. He has all of the the physical tools to be that kind of player. And again, it's just another reason why Brad Holmes is, is once again, you know, that guy. And, and once again, showing and, and and flexing his muscles when it comes down to acquiring young, you know, high quality talent in the draft. Um, with that said, before we kind of wrap up this video, so that's you know, we spent all this time talking about Terry on Arnold and, and day one. Looking ahead to day two today, what do you see? And I, it doesn't necessarily have to be a player, but with the Lions only having, you know, the 61st pick in the second round, where do you think that they kind of go, you know, on day two? Well, I'm hoping now, I don't know how realistic it is. It'd be nice if, a, a you know, one of the interior offensive linemen or even a tackle was around, um, at, you know, when mm -hmm. the Lions pick next at 61, like that would be nice just because that would solidify another position group that we know needs some more uh, help in terms of the long term, right? So maybe if Panay's cousin, um, someone in the comments corrected me last time, I hope, you know, Kingsley uh, from from mm -hmm. BYU, I need to say, I'm going to get his name correct before I say it on air again, but um, Sua Mataia, hopefully, <laughs> Sua Mataia, something like that. But yeah, Panay's cousin, someone along those lines, I, I think the Jackson Powers Johnsons of the world are going to be long gone by the time the Lions pick again, unfortunately, but uh, a receiver could also be on the table, right, Miko? Like, hmm? yeah, I was gonna say, like, there's so many, there's so many defensive players that are still on the board that didn't get picked, and there's still quite a few offensive linemen that could still go fairly high. There's a couple corners that are still available, like I said, Kool Aid McKinstry is still still on the board, and it's Rexdraw Junior is still out there. It's it's could be interesting to see like how a receiver could possibly fall to them. I'm kind of in the same boat as you though. I think it's either an offensive lineman, whether interior or or tackle, or possibly an edge. Those are the two that that seem the most likely to be available. 
Um, and if that's the case, I'm only going to throw out one name. Adiza Isaac would be like perfect. That'd be sweet, man. We could pl- would be yeah. perfect. And we could make a whole video about how you just plug him in at the jack, like what they wanted Julian, yep. what they wanted Julian and Charles Harris and all those cats to play. But yeah, he'd be perfect to play the jack. Drop, drop in coverage here and there. Be a good set the edge still, you know, all that good stuff. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll listen. We're a couple hours away. We'll figure out and see what happens tonight in the in the NFL draft. But day one, day one was a home run, Morgan. No, no better way of Great saying day, it. Man, the weather was nice. The weather's nice again. We're gonna go downtown again and like see some of the other stuff. Like we didn't really get into the draft. Like where you, you know, it was crazy in there, man. The the the, the, the app told yeah. you. Remember that we had a notification for those that didn't see it on social media yet. It basically said, uh, yeah, no more admittance. We we are closed down because they were at like 275,000 plus people. So I, we'll see. I'm going to, we want, I want to go see that little lions exhibit thing where they have like, uh, the Dan, Cam- oh, I want to yeah. see that the Dan Campbell will, I don't, it's kind of weird, but kind of funny. Like fortune yeah, teller. I want to yeah. see that little thing. Apparently that's pretty cool. Um, Sarah wants to see the, there's like some Carhartt exhibit or something. Carhartt pop up. Okay. Know. We'll see. So. But yeah, it was a home run, bro. I'm I'm 100 with you. That was such a great day for the Lions yesterday, the city, and we had a great time. 100. So with all that said, guys, if you guys are going down to the city, be safe, enjoy yourselves. If you see any of the POD staff, say what's up. Sure. You know, we're we're friendly. We will talk to you. Yeah, shout out <laughs> to people yesterday that came up. I didn't get your names, but thank you so much for the kind words. They came up to us when we were just sitting at our table for a little bit yes. there. Um, but yeah, appreciate y'all, man. More than you know. Absolutely. So with all that said, if you guys are looking for any more content, any more insight into Terry on Arnold or whatever else the Lions are doing on draft day, be sure to check out prideofdetroit.com. The staff is like seriously heavy at work trying to get out as much content as we possibly can. Um, also be tuned into the uh, Pride of Detroit YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. It's going to take us a little bit of time, but a Terry on Arnold film breakdown is definitely yes. coming. So if you want to know and see exactly what he does best on the field, you want to be make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. So with all that said, I'm Miko. He's Morgan. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch, and we'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one.